Thank you for your interest in this public hearing for the State Road 15 and 600, also known as US 1792, widening and airport boulevard intersection improvements project. Mr. Sam Jumber is the Florida Department of Transportation's project manager, and Mr. Matthew Steen is the consultant project manager. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information about the proposed project with the public and to allow the public to voice any concerns or questions they may have about the project. This public hearing is being held in accordance with Section 339.155 Florida Statutes, Section 339.199 Florida Statutes, and Section 120.525 Florida Statutes. This public hearing was advertised consistent with federal and state requirements and is being conducted consistent with the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. This hearing is being held to give all interested persons the right to understand the project and comment on their concerns to the department. Public participation at this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to FDOT compliance with Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith. FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720, or telephone 386-943-5367, or email jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator at 605 Sewanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450 or telephone 850-414-4753 or email jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information about the U.S. 1792 project improvements. This public hearing also serves as a forum to give you the opportunity to express your opinions and concerns regarding the project. At the conclusion of this presentation, Attendees who have filled out a speaker card upon registering at the door will be given the opportunity to speak into a microphone. Project staff will also be distributing speaker cards to additional attendees who wish to make a verbal statement. An official transcript is being made of all verbal comments and will become part of the public record for this project. This public hearing was advertised using several techniques, including emails to elected leaders and governmental partners, letters mailed to property owners within 300 feet of the project right-of-way, advertisements in the Sanford Herald, notices posted on FDOT websites, and hand-delivered notices to gathering spots along the project corridor. The project is located in Seminole County in the city of Sanford. The project begins north of Lake Mary Boulevard and continues north to the end of the project north of Airport Boulevard. The limits of the intersection improvements at Airport Boulevard and U.S. 1792 extend 577 feet east of the intersection to 700 feet west of the intersection along Airport Boulevard. The primary objective of this project is to provide an additional right turn lane throughout the limits of the project and to improve traffic movement through the U.S. 1792 and Airport Boulevard intersection. Additional improvements will be made to the corridor as part of the project, including traffic enhancements for motorists and pedestrians. These improvements are designed to increase safety for all users of 1792. This project has been designed to minimize impacts to utilities and limit disruption to traffic during construction to the greatest extent possible. Due to deficiencies in the existing roadway pavement, the surface of the asphalt needs to be replaced. 
This will be done by milling the top layer of asphalt and replacing it with new asphalt. In addition to repairing the pavement, this project will provide safety and operational improvements throughout the corridor. These include improvements to the existing mid-block crossing on 1792, providing a dedicated 7-foot buffered bike lane in both directions, improving the lighting at all crosswalks, and making drainage improvements along Airport Boulevard. This project will extend the existing right turn lanes on US 1792 to create a continuous outside turn lane for both southbound and northbound traffic. The new roadway will consist of a 30-foot raised median with three 11-foot lanes and a 7-foot buffered bike lane. This graphic depicts the current conditions on US 1792 which shows the typical rural depressed median along with two 12-foot lanes in both directions with a sporadic dedicated right turn lane at driveways and shopping center entrances. This graphic depicts the proposed condition on US 1792 which shows a raised curbed median, three 11-foot travel lanes, and a 7-foot buffered bike lane in both directions. This graphic depicts the existing conditions of US 1792 at the mid-block pedestrian crossing. Signing is provided at the location of the crossing, but at this time, oncoming traffic is not required to stop for crossing pedestrians. This graphic shows the improved condition of the pedestrian mid-block crossing to simplify the pedestrian movement within the new raised median and provide pedestrian hybrid beacons to warn oncoming traffic that they must stop to allow pedestrians to cross. Pedestrian hybrid beacons will be installed at the new mid-block crossing on US 1792. The operation of the pedestrian hybrid beacons is very simple for pedestrians and drivers to understand. First, the pedestrian hybrid beacon signal is dark until activated. The pedestrian signals will display the don't walk symbol. The pedestrian will then push the crossing button and the lower yellow light will begin to flash. Then, the flashing yellow will change to a steady yellow prior to the upper lights turning steady red. The pedestrian signal will then be changed to the walk symbol. At this time, traffic will be stopped with a steady red on the pedestrian hybrid beacon and it will be safe for the pedestrian to cross the median. The red lights will then begin an alternating flashing pattern and the pedestrian signal will display a flashing don't walk symbol and the countdown timer will display the time remaining to cross the roadway. Once the pedestrian is safely in the median, the pedestrian hybrid beacon will be set back to dark. The signals will be staged so that pedestrians can cross one direction of travel to the median. The pedestrian will then activate the signal from the median to finish crossing the roadway. Pedestrian hybrid beacons have been providing improved pedestrian safety since the year 2000. Along with improving the traffic flow on US 1792, several intersection improvements will be made to the intersection of US 1792 and Airport Boulevard. Along the east leg of the intersection, a new dedicated right turn lane will be added in the westbound direction onto northbound US 1792. Additionally, a raised traffic separator will be added to increase safety on Airport Boulevard. Improvements also include drainage and new mast arm signals. Within the limits of the intersection, Airport Boulevard will be resurfaced and restriped to accommodate the new improvements. This graphic depicts the current conditions of the intersection, which shows a dedicated left turn lane in the westbound direction, along with a through right turn lane at the intersection. A single right turn lane is provided in the eastbound direction. Currently, there is no raised traffic separator between the eastbound and westbound lanes on the east leg of the intersection. This graphic depicts the updated condition, which will include a dedicated left, through, and right turn lane in the westbound direction. This graphic also shows the new traffic separator between the eastbound and westbound lanes on the east leg of the intersection, as well as the proposed dual right turn lanes on the west leg of the intersection. During construction of this project, 
Measures will be taken to ensure the safety of construction workers and the traveling public and to ensure access will be maintained to all homes and businesses within the project limits. To provide this measure of safety, lane closures will be necessary while pavement work and sidewalk construction is being performed, but will be limited to weekday nights. Pedestrian access will be maintained throughout construction, including access to all bus stop locations. The design of this project began in August of 2015 and is currently in the development phase of design. Design will be completed in June of 2020, with construction beginning in the fall of 2020. Construction is anticipated to be complete in late 2021. The construction cost for this project is estimated to be approximately $6.5 million. For project information, please visit www.cflroads.com. This website is FDOT's platform to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website, which contains links for easy access to online information and to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the project website, you will be able to view the current project schedule details, project contact information, and access project files such as this presentation. To access the project website, go to www.cflroads.com. On the main page, from the pull-down menu labeled Road, select US 1792, then click Search. When the new page opens, click the link labeled Future Projects, and then select any of the project numbers for this project, which are 436679-1, 436679-2, and 436857-1. There are several ways you may share your comments with the project team. You may verbally state your comments during the public comment period, which will follow this presentation. You may fill out a comment form tonight and drop it in the comments box. You also may take a comment form with you and mail it or email it to Samuel Jumber, as noted on the form. Also, you may dictate your comments to the court reporter, who was available before the project presentation and will also be available to receive your statements during and after the public comment period. As you visit the Central Florida Roads website, you may submit comments by using the Ask a Question button. All comments postmarked or emailed by July 3, 2018 will become part of the official public hearing record for this project. After the presentation, if you want to make a verbal public statement regarding the design or effects of the US 1792 design project, you will have the opportunity to do so. After this presentation, there will be a 10-minute break before we hear public comments. If you would like to speak during the public comment period, you will need to complete a speaker card. Speaker cards are available at the sign-in table. Once you have a speaker card, fill it out and return it to Jason Flick. During the public comment period, we will listen to your verbal comments. As each speaker is called to the podium, you will be asked to state your name and address for the public record before you begin sharing your comments.